Hey, what's up? It's Square Guy, back with some more Let's Play The Talos Principle. So, I've already played, um, I've already played my Virgo vs. Zodiac for today, and I got through all the items on my to-do list, so I decided, and I just felt like, I want to play more of this game. So I'm back here. I got motion sick last time after 20 minutes, and so that's why that episode was too short. Um, but today I had a nice big meal, and so hopefully... Uh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go, uh, this way first. Um, cause th this looks like it's further on. I had a nice big meal, so hopefully the motion sickness won't, uh, be as strong this time. Let's go back here, cause I had an idea how to solve My this child, puzzle. You do not need to collect all sigils at once. Yes, I do! You are free to return to this place <laughs> whenever you choose. I did it. I did the thing that I thought it could do, and I did. Is there any reason to go over there? I don't think so. Oh, yes there is. Hmm. Now what? Can't do anything with this one while I'm here. I can freeze it through there. Oh, I know what I can do. Double puzzle solve. There we go. Now I can take this one. And hit that one. And I can take this one. And hit that one. Yeah. I didn't know that- I, I didn't realize you could jam these things at a distance if you just have a straight shot to them and not like bars in the way. Uh, cause I guess the bars are working like Faraday cages. Like they- they uh... They jam the jammers, essentially. And I get this thing! Yay! The fence going down? No? Well, you're wrong, God. I need all the things now. Because I'm a completionist. <laughs> so I got one, I got a yellow one. This one looks green to me. I already got a bunch of green ones. Some of these are closed. Only the two of us. So there's a... Camera. I get the camera from here. And. What else? There's nowhere to go back here. And I have to open this thing, of course. What's over here? Another one. Got it. So I open that one. And. Actually. Um, can I hit that from in here? I can. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna open this. Take both of these with me. And that. And you. Hit this one. And now we go run up and take this. Yay! There's a, I, I'm... Oh, it's, it's not A. It doesn't mean press A. Alright. We're going fast this time. I should look at the time. 6.30. Actually, yeah. It's, it's a little... It's like 6.35 is when I started playing. Something like that. Where am I going? I got him from here and there. This music is so relaxing. Very... Tranquil. Fantasy-like. Are there any other... Did something else open in here? Once I got that? No. Hey, is this place gonna turn into maze? Or like, gates gonna open up as shortcuts and I'm gonna have to remember how to get anywhere? Yeah, so now I think we've got all the Tetris pieces around here so far with the open gates, so let's go in here. 
What have we got? A computer. A very, very old computer. Library session. Network inaccessible. <laughs> this is what you type when you don't know anything. Hi, hello world. I'm, well, I am a robot, but I don't know the hello world trope. Uh, should I be like, directory? Help. <laughs> I bet that would have done for all the things. So this is command line, this is, um, for people not familiar, this is how, um, Linux works. Uh, at least it looks kind of like Linux to me. Or it might also be... Uh, sorry, I'm brushing my monitor because I saw a little spider making a web. I want to hopefully try to kill it. Um, uh, yeah, so you would type in commands and it would, instead of having windows that you click through and click the folders, it, uh, you navigate by typing, like, Actually, I don't remember how to navigate. There's the... Oh, oh, is it a spider? I don't know if it's a spider. You guys can't see it because it's here. It's It looks like it's it's moving like a spider, like on a web. And it's between the ceiling and my monitor. There's It's like six feet, but there's a spider trying to do stuff between it. Anyway, back to the game. Uh, list, open display of available resources. Open file name, show contents of the file. Uh, help. Display this text. Run MLA. Load Milton Library Assistant. Advanced interface. Exit. Close terminal session. Um, I can type help again just for this again. List. Um. Okay. So I can I can uh, type. Uh, open. I, I'm not typing, I'm just choosing. There's welcome, Athena, dot text, and figure it out, email. So welcome. From Nadia Sarab Sarabai. Okay, it was a little flying thing, not a spider. And I finally managed to get it. So small, it's not even worth washing my hands after pinching. Uh, sorry if I was a little odd at the meeting. I know you were nervous, but the truth is that, is that so was I. This may be hard to believe, but you intimidate me. You're so young and you've already accomplished so much. If the situation wasn't so grim, I might even be jealous. There's also something I wanted to clarify. I realize that, normally speaking, I'm head researcher here, but this is your project and everyone will respect that. And yes, I know you're not used to working like this, but as of today, you're in charge. No pressure. G. Let's do this. Nadia. Let's open. Ah, so it tells us. Tells us uh, there's no star after the ones we've read already. I mean, before. Chapter 6. You don't get to read the other chapters. Athena in the Garden of Hesperides. Hes Hesperides. Did not trust them, but they moved with such grace, such nobility, that it was hard not to follow them further into the strange garden of gears and cogs. They led her to a place where the crowns of the brass trees seemed to grow together, forming a kind of chamber strangely reminiscent of a chapel. In the middle of this chamber grew a smaller tree, made of bright blue steel, and upon this tree grew a single golden apple. This apple, the nymph said in unison, their eyes aglow, confers the gift of deathlessness and true wisdom. Many heroes and not a few villains have come to claim it, but all faltered in the final step. For you must know that deathlessness reveals the mortality of the world, and true wisdom its unending folly. Who would take this burden upon themselves? Some say that Heracles, gazing upon the stars, and wept. So it looks like there's some text missing. I'm not gonna remember those numbers. I, hopefully they're just aesthetic. <laughs> Figure it out email. From someone to someone else. 
The way I see it, the world doesn't come with a manual. You've got to figure it out for yourself. A bit here, a bit there, put it together, try to make sense of it. I'm pretty sure there's a truth, but that doesn't mean everyone who claims to know it really does. Then again, that doesn't have to be a bad thing. We live in an amazing world and searching for the truth can be a real adventure. Plus, it's good for the brain. Anyway, just some rambling thoughts from your old man. Don't let this stuff get you down. You're young, you've got loads of time to figure it all out. Love, Dad. Oh, that's nice. Uh, let's run MLA. Plain language interface. How can I help you? Do you understand what I'm saying? Understand is a strong way to put it, but yes. <laughs> Describe your functions. The Milton Library System is designed primarily to sort and classify data in the library archive. Secondarily, it facilitates user inter interaction with library resources oops, via an in intuitive human language interface. It also provides networking and troubleshooting functions. What was the first word of the last sentence you wrote? I'm sorry, I'm only able to process and respond to basic subject verb syntax. What is the current status of the library archive? There are 47 million resources in archive taking up that a lot of disk space. This is approximately the size of 30 billion photos, 7 million minutes of HD video, so about as long as, as uh, my let's play videos are gonna be for the rest of my life, <laughs> and the entire internet in 2003. However, the majority of library resources are corrupted or invalid. That many gigabytes of uncorrupted resources are indexed. Oh, wow. So, gigabyte is a billion bytes. A petabyte is a million gigabytes. So, so if 10 gigabytes of uncorrupted data are remain out of 5 petabytes, that is... That, that's 1 in 500,000 bytes. For every one that is uncorrupted, there are 500,000 that are corrupted. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that one. Not gonna say if I can take offense. How old are the library archives? Library resources, resource publishing dates range from July 1995 to 27th of June 2030 something 203 F So it, it, it either means 2030 something or 20,300 something or 203,000 something and so on Um, how long has this system been running? The system has been active for overflow years. <laughs> All right, so it's not 2030. It's uh, it's over 20,000. What caused the data corruption? Time. Progressive data corruption is inevitable in any system over time. Additionally, a large number of inconsistencies were directed, detected during sorting, leading to greater than average data invalidation. Hard drives take a long, long, long time to degrade. <laughs> so this is really old. We are far in the future. It's like, I think it's like the average is like, you know, less than one byte per year or less than one bit per year is a uh, no, that no, that can't it, that that can't be right. I don't know. It's some absurdly small number. Not that absurd, probably. Um, what are these terminals? Terminals provide access to the library resource archive. Uh, forget the library. My knowledge is limited to the data in the library archive. You can ask about other topics, but my responses may be limited. Who is Elohim? God. 
Elohim is the noun for God or gods in modern and ancient Hebrew. What am I? You are logged in with a guest account. <laughs> That's great. Where am I? You are currently in a support session with the MLA Human Language Interface module. Your library archive session may be resumed at any time. I'm not going to offend. I'm not going to insult the... Even if it can't be offended, I'm not going to insult it. Alright. Bye. New text added to journal. Alright, cool. That's neat. I am feeling good. And I mean that in my stomach. I'm feeling good in my stomach. So we can keep going. It's been 20 minutes and I still feel like keeping going. Also, I haven't been moving around, so maybe that had something to do with it. Is that all that was in here? Alright, that's neat. It points backwards, so you know if you missed something in the past. Alright, so I got everything there. I'm gonna... This button... R1 is run. That is uh, gonna be hard for me to remember. Trio Bombasticus. Is that a real Greek word? Or is it something that they made up for this? I'm just gonna say these trees just don't look that great to me. Although perhaps they are among the most realistic, because I think I've actually seen these trees in real life and their their leaves actually do look kind of flattened like this. Alright, you three are bouncing around there. I want to move you. I bet I'm gonna have one somewhere. Ha! Ah, can't get me. Here we are. Yeah, this this R1, like I press every other bumper and trigger before I find it. This looks like it'd be the best one to do first, although... Although I can... I could stand back here and do all of them. <laughs> I have to look down before I can pick it up. Oops. Bye. Treasure! Just what I needed! You know what that's from? You probably guessed by Step the voice. Step into the light, child, and my temple will be revealed to you. Here? Not yet. I need all the Tetrises. Poking a sleeping lion. <laughs> I'm gonna need to pick this up and- Whoa! I didn't notice that one. That one- I've died for the first time on accident. So, I noticed that whenever I fail, it rewinds time. That almost suggests to me that this this world is a simulation, not ac that I'm not actually a robot in a world with these structures built, but I'm in a computer simulation that looks like this. All right, so I gotta put you here. I gotta drop you here. And then I gotta how close can I be and take it? Pick and run. <laughs> and luckily it went the opposite direction, so I was fine. Alright, and I got the bar! Yay! Treasure! You are most diligent. Yes, God. Perhaps this trait will serve you well in times to come. That it does. Uh, also, it, uh, can keep me playing Legends of Zelda Breath of the Wild for 200 hours. As I get every freaking Korok Seed! Oh, I missed- what's a star? Was I not standing in the right place? There's a star here. What's the star?
There's no star. Is it a special collectible? I need to know. I need to know. Is it, is it here? Is there a star in there? What's a star? I need to know. I, I can hear the, hear the, the thing from another place. Okay, we're gonna be running around uh, trying to find this star for a little while. So I might cut and come back either when I find it or when I move on. You know what? I decided to move on and uh, if I find a star later, I'll come back. Maybe. Okay, it worked that time. You walk now upon the stones of my temple whence many gates lead. And know that I have other temples, for my garden is greater than your eye can encompass. And all these worlds I made for you. There's a star here. Do all these have stars? Can I do them out of order? Like, can I go in number seven? There's a star here. It's on a different one. So I think I did miss a secret. I'm gonna keep playing, and if I find stars later, I'll go back. What have we got here? Uh, I don't think I have enough things to put there. Neat. So, Elohim is obviously our creator, and uh, there's a couple possibilities. Either this is a, um, this world is a world of mythological gods, in which case he would be an actual god, or this is a world that is our world very far in the future, in which case, we're an AI who has been built by the descendants of humanity, and that's Elohim. Let this be our covenant. These worlds are yours, and you are free to walk amongst them and subdue them. But the great tower, there you may not go. For in the mm. day that you do, you shall surely die. So, uh, Garden of Eden type of thing, huh? I'm so interested in where this game is going. Local disk failed, unrecognized error detected. List. Library car archive is currently unavailable. System resources are redirected to handling incoming network messages. Access com portal. Error. Network inaccessible. Encountered unknown errors. Run MLA troubleshoot. Yes. Initiating plain language interface. Hello, guest. Is there something you'd like help with today? Um. Troubleshooting. I think I'd like to help accessing network functions. Most common. I think you would like. Okay, the most common network problems is holding insufficient account privileges. Please enter the admin password to authenticate your privileges. <laughs> Admin is incorrect. That is, uh, um, try again. God. Uh, QWERTY. Too many failed attempts. Would you like to create a new admin account? Yes. In order to prevent other access to admin controls, please take a moment to prove you are not a bot. <laughs> you will now be asked a series of inputs. Uh, if you hear with the production, you must consent to have your responses used to develop a broad psychometric profile. Uh, raw response data will be deleted immediately. Your profile only made available to other administrators. So I'm giving 
my a little bit of information from of myself to other administrators but that's okay because uh, presumably other administrators would consist of God and and uh, nobody else maybe some other people I don't know please enter quickly and instinctively time is a factor yes three two one two plus two answer four your input has been accepted. What is your subjective reaction to this image? Face. <laughs> what best describes a person? A human being, a being of negative entropy. Uh, this would be the robot of resp uh, negative entropy? There's no such thing as negative entropy. A problem solving system, a rational animal, a citizen, a human being. Not a human being, because I'm not a human being. A uh, citizen, I suppose. You're walking through the desert and come across a thirsty traveler. His eyes bulge from slow dehydration. You have water, but you're not sure how far it is to the next oasis. What do you do? Offer... <laughs> Kill him and collect his blood in a flask for later. Ignore him. Ask what you're doing in the desert. No, 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 no. You, you offer some water. Um, hopefully, he doesn't try to kill me for the rest of it. Part 1 of the certification process is now complete. You will receive a notification when Part 2 has been generated. Ah! So I get some more. Athena analysis. So I passed the test, apparently. User Alex16. Let's see if we, maybe we can remember these characters. Novel one, and novel's first sentence, she woke up in an impossible place, knowing nothing. Signifies more than the beginning of another amnesia-based mystery, though we should not go so far as to read the entire work as an allegory. Rather, while taking the science fictional novice at the core of the narrative at face value, we should... Blah, blah, blah. Note two, having no inherent knowledge of the nature of the world, forced to rely on what we are told by others and what our own subjective flawed limited senses tell us, social reality, belief, and objective reality, matter, come into conflict. When in chapter 16, a second awakening in the kingdom of Artemis, the protagonist questions her mentor on the a more meaningful interpretation can only be achieved through synthesis of cool stuff. I wish there was more. From Frank Ngatai to Miles, Dan, subject Ian. My first day at the Institu Institute for Applied Pneumatics. That would be the science of consciousness. On the way to work, and probably uh, made up for this game, but I, I, I have actually tried to construct a word that means the science of consciousness for my novel, and I came up with, with uh, pneumatics, um, which is very close to this. On the way to work, I'm terrified. What if they don't like me? What if they're all geniuses and I'm a complete buffoon? Maybe they were just kidding about letting me work there. Trembling, I walk in, and right at the entrance, there's a life-size poster of Jeff Goldblum. What the hell? Then I get it. Institute for Applied Pneumatics. Ian. Dr. Ian Malcolm from, from the Jurassic Park movies. Jeff Goldblum. Dr. Sarabi shows up smiling. We're trying to find a cool acronym back when the Institute was founded, he says. Enan? Iapen? Iapno? It all sounded stupid, but we didn't just want to call it Ian because, well, that's a name. And someone made a joke about calling it Jeff, and it kind of stuck. So we're officially called Ian, but if you hear anyone referring to Jeff, that's our internal name, I guess. I know, I know, bloody geeks. Talus Principle. This is us. Whether it's true that Daedalus constructed the giant Talos, or as others say he was the creation of Hephaestus, what we may be certain of is that he was made of bronze, and had but one vein within which flowed a liquid substance like blood, which was some claim was quicksilver and others assert was ichor, such as flows in the veins of the gods. 
The loss of that liquid caused him to die, as a man dies when he loses blood. May we not then say that Talos, though created as a machine or a toy, had all the essential properties of a man? He moved of his own volition, he spoke and could be spoken to, had wishes and desires. Indeed, in the tale of the Argonauts, that was the cause of his downfall. If then a machine may have all the properties of man and act as a man while driven only by the ingenious plan of its construction and the interaction of its materials according to the principles of nature. <gasps> Come on people, read your sentences out loud. <laughs> Then does it not follow that man may also be seen as a machine? This contradicts all the schools of metaphysics, yet even the most faithful philosopher cannot live without his blood. Yeah, so I, I have opinions on robots and life and consciousness, and my opinion is that you can make a conscious living robot, and there's no essential difference between natural life, the only difference between natural life and artificial life is that artificial life was made by somebody. Cool stuff. So yeah, like from the get-go, this character, this robot, Talos, probably his name is, or its name, is your name, whatever, um, is alive and conscious and living being and a person. And as we demonstrated by going into here and uh, passing that uh, essentially Turing test, that, uh, that this person is in fact very human-like. All right, what have we got here? Running around, there's emptiness everywhere. Oh, hey, a star! Yes, there's a star hidden in the level somewhere. I'm gonna have to go back and get it. So I need to bring a jammer into here, or find a jammer. What was that? This is a big place now. So let's run around, find a jammer. Or or maybe there's what why? That sound effect again. Oh, it's probably in the puzzle. Maybe I'll have to Oh hey look! I get outside! Can I go in the water? I can. I can go in the water. I'm gonna sink though. I have to know. What? The beginning were the words, and the words made the world. I am the words, the words are everything. Where the words end, the world ends. You cannot go forward in an absence of space. Repeat. In the beginning were the words, and the words made the <laughs> world. I. So, um. Perhaps. Perhaps more indication that this is a simulation? Or. Just saying, if we go too far under water, then we'll drown. <laughs> Very nice looking. Oh yeah, I also have the opinion that if a person is entirely within a simulation, then they're also a person. <laughs> Even if they don't have a body of their own. Uh, they do have to be conscious, though, so, like, Mario doesn't count. <laughs> At least not these days. Maybe a hundred thousand years in the future. This is really neat. There's just this optional area back here. It's really nice. Man, this is reminding me so much of The Witness. That was a good game. Is that a loading sound? It might be a loading sound. So big. So many places to go. Let's do a puzzle. <laughs> 